prepared to start moving. You're good to go. All right. The meeting of the Township of Precipitant Troy Hills Planning Board for Monday, March 6, 2023. It is 7.30 p.m. Announcement is made that adequate notice of this meeting has been given and that it is being conducted in accordance with NJSA 10 colon 4 6 at SEC of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act. Nora, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Didich. Here. Mr. Mealy. Here. Mr. Mass. Present. Mr. Napolitano. Here. Mr. Stanzio. Here. Mr. Von Aiken. Here. Chairman Dinsmore. Here. We also have our board planner, Ms. Winter. Our board engineer, Mr. Cangiano, and our board attorney, Ms. Steinley. Yes. <laughs> All right. If we could stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> All right, this meeting is open to the general public. Is there anybody here who does not have something on the agenda tonight who would like to speak about something? If, if it's not on the agenda, please. I seem to recall you've been here before. I think I might have been. Maybe once. It isn't that long. Um, my name is Julia Peterson. I live at 25 Old Persephone Road. I don't have to sign in. Okay. Um, when we got home from a recent vacation, I was surprised to find out that the lot next to ours is about to be declared an area in need of redevelopment. Um, this maybe shouldn't make any difference to most people, but it makes a big difference to us because our house is 300 years old. It's a National Historic Landmark. And whenever you live, if you live in a place that's empty next to you, whenever they start surveying, that's a, a bad sign. Um, and I, we, this house, this property has been in my family since 1857. Um, it's existed since 1752, so it's very old. And we are concerned about the future of what, what is going to happen. When my parents made the decision to sell what is actually the area in need of redevelopment now, in coordination with Rudy Olson, um, they were assured that research, research office zone would guarantee that the area wouldn't change much. Well, of course, we all know everything changes all the time. Um, and people around it, in the residences around it, the, the people in Marmora Road, the people in Green Hills, everybody said, oh, you love ROL because it'll be empty and it'll be green during the weekends. Your kids can ride the bikes on it. Anyhow. It isn't. It wasn't true. And I remember when the property was zoned for garden apartments, and garden apartments were going to solve the radicals problem in Persephone, and then ROL was going to solve the radicals problem. And now, it apparently, um, any uh, any pr a citizen can show up at town council meeting and present something which the town council will forward to you. So I just have questions. At the process of an area in need of redevelopment. Council already referred it to you, so it's in your hands. Um, is there a notice requirement? Was the study prepared, and has that been presented to the, the board? I'm assuming we're discussing um, Lanadex? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a little confusing, because I don't even know part of that property. Okay. So it, it was referred here, um, I believe, two meetings ago, and the planning board has directed uh, ARH to conduct a study. The study hasn't been completed at this point. So that would be the next step in the process of the property would be studied to see if it actually qualifies as an area in need of redevelopment. And then if it does qualify, is that when people get noticed? Um, so before the area in need study is, the, once the area in need study is finalized by the board planner, then public notice will be provided to um, property property owners and feet. not within 200 feet. The property owner properties that are subject to the area in need and any interested party. So if you would like to be named as an interested party, you'd have to go to um, 
I think the borough clerk would be the appropriate person to make sure that your name is on that list. Okay. And then there will be a hearing before the planning board where you'll, where you'll be able to raise your concerns on the study. Then that the planning board's recommendations based on the study get sent to the council and then the council makes the final decision. Okay, thank you. That's yep. really clear and I really appreciate Julie, that. Julie, I don't mean to interrupt. The approximate date is August 7th or April 17th. April 17th. Yeah. Okay, now is it legit for us to ask for contact with the planner who's doing the study to help them understand the history of the lot, which it, it's very unclear exactly what part here, what part of this property is included in the study, but we've lived there, you know, a long time, so we know the history of it. And maybe I, you know, I, I understand that there might it might be viewed badly, but it seems to me that it might be helpful. So we'll also prepare a map that will show exactly what is included in the study area, and mm -hmm. that'll be available at the clerk. Okay, but the East Lake School, which is immediately adjacent to this property, it is not part of. Okay, and and won't have that won't have any impact on the study. No. Okay, and the fact that there are going to be the 2,500 people living directly across the street from this isn't going to have any impact. No, we're looking just at that property that's um, <coughs> Do you under have the, the study. lot block and lot number? Not right here. I okay. can look it up, but it'll take me a few. Okay, if I leave you my phone number, can you tell me which block and lot it is? It's very, very important for us. Julie, I, call, call the zoning department in the morning. Call the zoning department or you could call me. I'll look it up for you. Okay, okay. great. Because there hasn't been, it was mentioned at one council meeting. It should be listed in the resolution that um, <coughs> referred the planning board um, to conduct the I study. I have never, there is, that copy, that resolution is someplace yeah, in, the, in the, I don't know where it is, okay. but I've tried. Okay. It so is. April 17th is the due date. <laughs> uh, I can give you, it's block 226, lots 3 and 3.02. 3 and 3.02. It might come up as 3.2 on the tax oh, map. I've seen 92. <laughs> so it's not 226, lot 3. It, it is. And lot two. Lot three and three point. But lot two is not. Lot two is not. Okay. This is what I'm, <laughs> what's really weird about it is lot two is the building that's referenced in, in most of the coverage of this. It's next to the funeral home. You don't, nobody knows, but there's a funeral home there. And then lot two is the former Solix building. 226 lot 3 is actually fully occupied at this point. It's not empty. Um, so that it's really, you know, it, it's something that really, really needs to be very, very clear. Okay. And I didn't want to start informing our neighbors about it until I was really clear. And, and I'm still not exactly clear. But Okay, so we will just uh, continue to pay attention. And, and I, I love this document, which is only two years old. I know that it's falling in disfavor already, but I love it because it really, a lot of citizens went into putting this together and putting input in. And a lot of citizens said what they really wanted the town to be like. And I'm not sure how many of us are really dying to have a warehouse next to our house. <laughs> I don't know. But Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for bringing it to our attention, and uh, I hope it all comes out as it should. Well, <laughs> this week. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Are there any other members of the audience that have items that they'd like to bring to our attention at this time that are not on our current agenda? Hearing and seeing none, we'll move on to the agenda. We're going to call application number 22.536, Ashutosh Desai and Stephen Bukert, 192 Condit Street, Block 716, Lots 1, 
minor subdivision with C variance for a two lot subdivision. Good evening, members of the board. Simone Cali, Cali Law, on behalf of the applicant property owners. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, we are here tonight proposing, um, as the chair just indicated, a minor subdivision of a unique lot that is oversized and irregular in shape. We are proposing to go from one lot to two to retain the existing single family dwelling on a, a portion of that property. And we are proposing to develop the new lot with another single family dwelling. Um, in addition to the minor site, uh, excuse me, subdivision relief, we have C variance relief that you will hear from in a moment from our planner. We have a total of three witnesses with us tonight. You will hear some brief civil engineering testimony followed by, um, I'll call our project architect, who could show you the design of the new home. And lastly, we'll put up our planner, who will take you through the planning proofs to demonstrate that we support the requisite standards um, to obtain the variance relief that we are seeking tonight. Um, and unless there are any preliminary questions from me, I would like Do to get started. we have some waivers I, uh, to go through? First yes. We are going to present our ask for some waivers here. Thank you. All right, so just a couple of waivers. Um, the traffic study and environmental study and the um, landscape plan, which they did provide a landscape plan from the engineer. Um, the ordinance requires it be from a landscape architect. We don't have any objections to any of these waivers. Thank you. All right, is there a motion to approve the waivers outlined in the ARH Associates uh, memo of January 5th, 2023. Motion to approve, Von Aiken. I have a second. Second, Dadich. Nora, would you call the roll? Mr. Dadich. Yes. Mr. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Meth. Yes. Mr. Napolitano. Yes. Mr. Stanziel. Yes. Mr. Von Aiken. Yes. Chairman Dinsmore. Yes. All right. Thank you. May I call my first witness? Yes, please. He is seated next to me already. Bill, can you please state your first and last name for the record? Uh, yes. Uh, my name is William Scott, S-C-O-T-T. -T. And board council will swear you right now. She's ready. Will you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Could you please provide the board with your address and some background on your experience and qualifications? Uh, I'm the coroner at, at Enser Plan. We're located at 172 Washington Valley Road in Warren Township. Uh, Enser Plan has been in business for uh, since 1985. It's been a family business, uh, three generations now. Um, I obtained my Bachelor of Science degree from Clarkson University in New York State. Uh, I obtained my professional engineer's license in New Jersey in 2004. Uh, I've had it in good standing uh, since then. It's in good standing now. Um, I have not appeared before this board, but I have appeared before approximately three dozen municipalities in central New Jersey. Um, okay. Are there any questions on this? Uh, witness on his uh, CV hearing and seeing none thank, thank you, you. <clears throat> Bill did you or somebody under your supervision prepare the plans that were submitted along with this application yes we did can you please take the board through the existing site conditions and then finish up with a uh, description of your uh, engineering site plan please sure thank you uh, so the subject lot is uh, lot one in block 716 and as we heard it's a it's a very peculiar lot it's an l-shaped lot which fronts on three streets um, what we're doing is um, it's an existing single family lot and it's surrounded on all sides uh, by existing single family dwellings um, it's owned as a single family residence um, what we're proposing to do is to subdivide this lot by extending the common rear line of the block, uh, which you can see if you look at uh, the radius map on the top right corner of sheet one. Uh, you can see in the block uh, the common line 
the rear line uh, is common to all of the lots in that block. And we're proposing to naturally extend that line and create two lots. Uh, there's an existing home on the property and it sits at the corner of Condit and Hawkins. Um, the lot that we would be creating um, for that home which is to remain um, would be 11,250 square feet. And that existing home would meet all of the front yard, side yard, and rear yard setbacks. Uh, that lot would require um, a variance for area and lot width uh, when measured from Condit to the rear. Although it would, map, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it would meet the lot width when measured from Hawkins to Ball. Uh, the remaining portion, which would be at the corner of Condit and Ball, uh, we're proposing to construct a new home. Uh, we worked with the architect uh, quite extensively to develop the smallest home that still would function properly. Um, and we situated that home on the property respecting the front yard setback from Ball and respecting the side yard setback uh, from the adjoining uh, lot. A uh, lot too. Uh, that lot will also require some variances. Uh, there will be a variance for area, uh, lot width, and uh, uh, building coverage variance. Uh, all the necessary utilities are within the roadway frontages on Condit and Ball. Uh, we're proposing public utility hookups. Uh, storm water would be handled by construction of a dry well. Uh, which would be piped by an overflow into the storm sewer on uh, Condit Street. So from an engineering perspective, it's a fairly straightforward design. Um, some minor grading proposed to direct um, rainfall towards the roadway, uh, not towards the neighboring properties. Um, and more or less wraps up my presentation. Thank you. I have no further questions for this witness. Are there any members of the board have any questions on this testimony? Mr. Van Aken. Uh Mr. Chairman, um, it, could I get confirmation that the uh, on a corner lot, if the if the front yard variance uh, applies to both uh, frontages of the property, or if there's a side yard that's that's permitted here. Oh, they've got side yard listed twice. Mr. Cangiano, did you yeah, have a it, it, There's two front yards, one rear and one side by, by ordinance. And the two front yards need to be 40 feet each. So then the description on the front page here with the radius map is incorrect about which variances are required. The, um, on the table. Yes. Maybe the applicant that has provided. Um, I, I believe the side yard is is between the rear of the home uh, and lot two, which would be required at 10 feet, which we're proposing. Uh, we would have a compliant front yard when measured from ball, but a non-compliant side uh, front yard when measured from conduit. The side yard, I believe, is created by the fact that uh, the lot is fronting on, okay. on ball. All right, so it, in the table on lot 1.02, I see your variance for front yard because you've got a, you've got both of them listed, the ball and the condom. And then also the building coverage and the lot square foot and the lot width. So that's four variances for 102 okay and then just the lot coverage for 101 correct lot uh, size lot, lot, lot area, area right lot area. yeah okay okay Gordon you have to yes uh, this may be a better question for your planner so I apologize if it is but what do you know what the area is for uh, block 
uh, 716 lot 2. Um, I, I don't. Okay, and how, and I, I guess it's the same for lot 20. I, I'm going to have to defer to my our planner. I don't have a copy of the tax map. It, well, it's, on, it's on your plan, isn't it? The tax map on the front? Yeah, it's not dimensioned, unfortunately. You didn't bring a scale? I did not. Um, I'm going to have to report you to the PE board, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Um, can you just yeah. go over... Um, so you have on um, lot 102, proposed lot 102. Um, measured from Condit Street, the required front yard setback is how far? 40 feet? 40 feet, yes. And the lot depth that you have from Conduit to the side, to the to the property line is 50. 50. So, and the re, and the side yard setback is how much? 10. 10. So you, you don't have a building envelope at all on this lot. Not without a variance, no. And then you're just for the boards. So can you go over the actual sizes of the dimensions of the variances for the that you you you, you called out um, for lot area? I think fifteen thousand is required. And what are you proposing? Uh, fifteen thousand is the requirement. Um, we're proposing twelve thousand five hundred. Uh, I'm sorry, eleven thousand two hundred and fifty. No, I'm talking about lot 102. And that would be 6,250. So less than half of the lot size. And then also for lot width, can you go over that too? What's required and then what you're proposing? Uh, lot width would be 100 feet, and we have an existing width of 50. So again, about half, well, half. And we already went over the front yard setback, and that's 40 feet required, and you're proposing much, much less than half. You're proposing 16 feet. That's right. I just wanted to make sure the board understood the level of what you're asking. And then similarly for a lot, the remaining lot, 1.01, um, that's also undersized. You're taking a conforming size lot and making it undersized. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Thank you, sir. Any other members of the board have questions on this testimony? I'm going to ask now if there are members of the public who have questions of this witness on this testimony at this time. Hearing and seeing none. Councillor, your uh, next witness. Thank you. That would be our project architect. As you're um, setting up, can you please sure. state your full name for the record and a business address? Yes, Keith T. Chambers, and my it's P.O. Box 1058 Flemington, New Jersey, and a licensed architect in New Jersey and Pennsylvania, and I've been practicing for almost 30 years, and I have testified before this board before. Could you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, thank you. And I believe you've been qualified before the board before. Any questions on the qualifications? No? Okay. Thank you. Keith, um, you were somebody under your supervision prepared the plans that were submitted with this application. Is that correct? No, I have. I, you, you did. I did. Thank you. Um, please take the board through your proposed design. Sure. First, I just wanted to show some pictures. Take the microphone with you, please. Sorry. <laughs> it's on already. Okay. 
first I just wanted to show some pictures of the neighborhood in case people aren't familiar with um, this is the structure that's on the lot that we're dealing with this is the house right across the street I just wanted to show this for the style of houses that we have in the neighborhood adjacent and you know at the end of the street and what we have you know right across the street just to show a couple and pictures. I don't think, I don't these, think were, these were submitted with the application. No, so these were not submitted, a, so we'll have to label them. We'll mark uh, this sheet as Exhibit A1, and if you could just provide, let me know the date of that. Yes, uh, it's 3-2-23. Okay. And those are neighbor neighboring property photos? Pictures, okay. just photos, yes. I'll take you through the the floor plans now um, basically it's is, a, is this for lot 1.001 or 1.02 I guess it would be this is the new home 1.02 sorry yes, 1.02 uh, we have a two-story structure it's fairly small in, in footprint we have a single car garage um, living room family room kitchen and office den and powder room on the first floor and on the second floor, we have master bedroom and three other bedrooms with laundry and master bath and fall bathroom. Um, we're first floor habitable space, 732 square feet. The garage floor area is about 308 square feet. And total, we're talking about 17, 20, 14 for the total square footage of the house. I'm, I just, I'm just going to place something in context here. Is this what you're actually proposing, or is this yeah. for a uh, sample of what it might be? No, this is the actual. This will be the actual drawing. All right. Score. Since we're only here for uh, separating the pieces of property, the subdivision. You know what? What is our power to hold them to it, as it were? So there's no requirement for site plan approval of residential um, properties, but since the applicant will be requesting C variances for side yard setback, um, rear yard setback, and front yard setback for 1.02, I believe that's why they're presenting the, the floor plan layout. Right. We're trying to present to show right. what will fit on that and what we could actually have there. You know, that will so in, in if we agree to approve this, the resolution would basically fundamentally permit this or and yes. not much else. Yeah, substantially similar to that yeah. footprint. Right. Elevations of the proposed structure that we planning to put here and based on the, what you just saw the floor plans um, two-story well within the you know we're allowed 35 feet we're only you know at, at 23.15 feet to the required so we're well under the 35 foot height restrictions and two-story matching everything else on the block only single car garage Clapboard. How tall is it to the to the peak sticking out towards uh, Condit? Here. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the same thing through throughout. Well, you've got an average there. Yeah, that's that's what you're. I, I understand that, but, but I'm dealing right. with a house that's um, 16 feet from the property. You're probably line another three feet tall or so, 26 feet. Okay. 26 feet to the ridge, which is 35s allowed. I, I understand that. Yeah. But yeah. No, I'm just understood. <clears throat> and then the last is just a rendering of the house on the on the street, showing the trees that will remain and the scale of what what is out there and what it will look like. And this, I don't believe this rendering was submitted as, no. as well, so A2. Mm -hmm. 
And this rendering was prepared by your office? No, it was not. Karen Taylor, who's our rendering person that we use. Sorry, I don't know what date it was, but. We'll mark the date as today's date. <coughs> Basically, all that's all my testimony for tonight. Basically, I have no further questions for this witness. The members of the uh, board have what questions of witness at this time, Mr. Meth? Just one. Um, given that you're asking for a building coverage variance. Is it necessary to build this with a, is it possible to build a house without a garage that complies with our ordinance requirement of 15% maximum building coverage? I don't believe so, not, not for this, you know, that would be, I have to discuss Could you speak into the microphone, here. please? Microphone. I'm sorry. I would have to discuss it with the, the engineer to see what you're asking. I mean, I'm not even sure what you're, you're saying to fit within the building envelope? Not the building envelope, but the coverage limit of the zone. So the zone permits 15% building coverage. And this building is 17 point, uh, 17.04% 17 coverage as proposed. Right. So you have 6,250 square feet times 0.15. Could you build a building that uh, a reasonable building that has a footprint of 937.5 square feet or less? I don't know. I, you know, I can't answer that. I, You're an architect, right? Yes, I am. Okay. I, I, you know, I don't want to say sure if we could do it, but... Is, is it possible? I guess this is one question, and then is it possible for this applicant? Yeah, I, is, I think, what he means. Is it, is, it, is it possible to build such a structure? I can't answer that, I'm not sure, but we'd have to consult we'd have to, with we, the applicant. We'd have to come up with some feasible. designs to see if it's feasible to see, you know, build it without, like you were saying, without a garage <laughs> and shrink it down to fit within the coverage calculation. I'd have to check to see, but I don't know. If you shrunk the footprint, you'd also probably trigger another variance because we have a minimum gross floor area. What's the minimum gross floor area? Um, for a single story building, it's 1,200 square feet. And for more than two stories or more, it would be 1,500. Yeah. And the garage takes up 308 square feet. OK. Um, I wanted to mention on that same garage topic, the ordinance requires two parking spaces. And what I wanted to confirm, or have you tell me where the second parking space is. You have one of the driveway one in the driveway and one in the garage okay that's where the two are for this and we could my client you know we spoke with him and said we could do a carport you know in, in lieu of a garage but to me you want your car i was going to say you've got a room over that garage yes that's correct so that it doesn't that wouldn't serve the purpose I'm personally less concerned about the width of the house, including a garage, than I am about the fact that there's only a 10 foot backyard slash side yard setback. And I don't know how that fits next to in the house next door. Well, you know, you guys let the planner discuss, but this is a garage of the neighbor. So, and then behind this, there's, there's nothing behind our you know, so we're, you know, butting up to their garage, which has no windows in it or anything like that. So. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Other members of the public, have, or not public, but the board have, any of our professionals have any more uh, questions or comments? Well, just going back to the parking. So what's the distance from the property line to the uh, garage door? Like, I, uh, you require to have 18 feet, we 9 by 18. We have 18. You have 18 right to the door. Yep. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. 
And you mentioned trees a moment ago. The limited disturbance shown on the plan, I realize this is probably for the architect, but this is almost goes toward uh, excavation requirements and foundations. Um, there's a couple of trees, a 24 inch oak tree um, at that corner uh, by the garage within 10 feet of that. Um, are you putting a basement in this house? Or is it? Yes, we are. So you're going to have substantial excavation. Those trees are shown to remain, but they'll probably have to be removed because the root structure will be compromised. We'll have to check that. Um, that's all I have. Mm -hmm. Mr. Van Aken. Mr. Chairman, uh, so I noticed that, you know, the orientation of the house compared to how the uh, setbacks are laid out seems to be a little bit off. So the rear of your house appears to be what's what's facing to lot number two, um, even though you're only calling that the side yard. So even though the rear of your property is, is effective, you're, you're using the side yard setback for the rear of your property instead of the rear yard setback, which gets you very close to your neighbor's property. Right. He, he's 10.5 up to the fence line, and we're going to be 10 feet to the fence line so you have 20.5 between the structures well okay but uh one we're not talking about their property we're talking about yours yeah, no, I understand. And, and that one is also a garage as we can see in your sure um, understand. which is also much lower to the to the ground level than what you're proposing mm -hmm. understood i mean but behind the garage it's mm -hmm. open there's no structure there that we're yeah. Well, it leads me to question whether or not you, you, we are actually are orienting the setbacks correctly, and we need to use the rear yard setback in its appropriate location, or your design needs to be reorganized so that it, it sets within the setbacks that are set forth in, in the variances. We'll have to discuss that we'll have to the planner. We'll have to answer that. Okay. My, my personal opinion on this is that it's it's matching the house next door there's a front yard you know for the house that's here that's already on the lot and you know we could make i understand what you're saying we yeah. could make this the front yard and this but then with the size of the house it could be a long and narrow you know mm -hmm. house. so i understand that we could do that yes yeah. and we did look at that okay you know we had a front door here and we tried to do it but it, it just didn't lend itself to once you went in the house the stairwell the, uh, narrow house room it, it's side. a very awkward lot so it you're going to deal with awkward railroad, designs railroad style design of a house you know mm -hmm. going back years ago you know shotgun you style what's that shotgun <laughs> style. shotgun style exactly exactly we in the bayou now yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes we are so. Nolans. Any, any other yep. questions? Real quick. Uh, so, Let's how go. many trees have to be removed to, to build this house on, on the lot that's there now? I, I counted six. Is that about right? Is that right? Sorry. Yes. And they're sizable trees as well. I, I, what sort of um, stormwater runoff are you proposing? Uh, so the neighbors aren't going to have inundated with water, especially the houses right. I guess I guess this behind it is called or side of it. That's a question for the engineer. Engineer, okay. Engineer, but it's the dry well system. Yep. And they're going to be you know leaders into the dry well, and then the dry well is going to tie into the the street uh, edge basins. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> any other members of the board have questions? No, you're seeing none. Are there any members? of the public who have questions on this testimony at this time. Hearing and seeing none. All right, Councillor. My last witness, Mr. Chairman, is our planner. Good evening. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please, please state your name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the record, please. Yes, I gladly. I'm Michael J. Pesolano. That's spelled P-E-S-S-O. 
L A N O, licensed professional planner in the state of New Jersey, business address 140 Elmwood Avenue, Pagoda, New Jersey. All right, thank you. Thank and you. have you appeared before this board previously? Uh, not this board, but many times before uh, the Zoning Board of Adjustment of Persephone. Okay, and your license is Thanks current you. and in good standing? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Can you, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Do you accept Mr. Pasolano? Any other things you'd like to tell us about yes. your? Uh, just briefly, um, the uh, start of my career was uh, when I was uh, first licensed uh, in 1983 as a licensed, I'm sorry, 1984, as a licensed professional planner, uh, 40 plus years later, still at it. Uh, the early part of my career uh, was more oriented towards providing uh, in-house uh, type of municipal planning services. The middle part of the, my career, I was working with a, a mid-sized engineering architecture and planning firm uh, based in Persephone, uh, H2M Associates, uh, to be specific, uh, where I provided uh, oversight of development review services and other planning services for half a dozen municipalities, uh, mostly in the North Jersey area. Um, and the latter part of my career now uh, is what I'm speaking of, appearing before boards such as this, zoning boards throughout the state of New Jersey uh, as an expert planning witness testifying uh, on development applications. Any questions on the applicants or on the uh, witnesses? Bona fides? <laughs> Hearing and seeing none, your witness. Thank you. Before you get started with your planning proofs, can you please describe to the board what you reviewed in preparation of your testimony tonight? Gladly. Um, certainly the application materials. Uh, I was on board with this application from the start. Uh, which is not always the case, but uh, I provided uh, guidance to the applicants uh, on formulating uh, an application that made sense uh, and an application that, that would be uh, complete for your review tonight. Um, but I did review the, the relevant portions of the municipal master plan done in the class down to 2020. Uh, uh, Would Patrick you please Sony speak into Morgan's. the microphone? I'm Thank sorry. You. Thank you for, Thank for you. that. Uh, did review the municipal master plan of 2020, uh, the township zoning ordinance regulations uh, as it applies to this uh, project, visited the site, uh, studied it extensively, uh, both in person and remotely, and uh, then formed a, a planning opinion about uh, does the application meet or not meet the criteria for the requested uh, four variances that are before the board tonight. Thank you. Um, can you please take the board through your planning groups? Gladly. I'd like to uh, kick off with distri distribution of the planning, planning exhibit. I believe we're up to 8-3. Is that correct? 8-3. Uh, Mr. Describe what this exhibit, exhibit is. Can you say planning exhibit? Yes. The map and photo exhibit prepared by myself, uh, consisting of 10 pages. Uh, presenting maps, uh, aerial images, annotations on those images, and ground photos uh, taken by myself. Thank 
<clears throat> so A3, again, a 10-page exhibit, and it too uh, informs this process uh, by collecting and de um, depicting the physical setting for uh, the application and the relief that's requested. Uh, just to summarize, we are seeking for uh, C-type variances, bulk variances, another term for that, of course, uh, two area variances for lots smaller than the minimum 15,000 square foot lot area in the R3 zone where the property is situated, uh, a lot width of 50 feet where 100 feet is required for proposed lot 1.02, the front setback of 16 feet where uh, 40 feet is required uh, on the uh, Condit Street uh, frontage, there are two front yards for the, the uh, lot point, proposed lot 1.02, and uh, a coverage variance of 17.04%, where 15% building coverage is required. On sheet one of, of A3, I have highlighted the uh, subject property. Um, it could be called a flag shape. It could be called a cleaver shape. I, I like the flag shape uh, title myself. But you can see that it, it represents a the whole end of uh, a developed block uh, fronting on three streets, actually, Ball Avenue, Condit Street, and Hawkins Avenue. An earlier question was asked about the dimensions of the two adjoining lots, uh, lot two and lot 20 in block 716. Um, I use my uh, trusty magnifying glass because I can't see those dimensional numbers very well without it. Uh, it looks like they're 80 by 25. Uh, the math gets to 10,000 square feet uh, with those two dimensions. Both, both of those lots, 80 by 25. Uh, 125? By my observation. 125. 80 by, did I say? 80 by 125. Yes. Okay, thank you. So those, um, those are the uh, dimensions of the two adjoining lots. Um, another takeaway uh, for me from uh, this particular uh, tax map is uh, there on Hawkins Avenue, you can spot with your eye uh, several lots that are uh, of a narrow dimension, um, and also one on uh, the north side of Ball Avenue towards uh, Liverwick Road. Um, nothing particularly remarkable about them, but uh, it's germane to, to the board's consideration because this proposed uh, 6,125 square foot lot would not be uh, the only small lot uh, in the general area. So with that, we can come back to that if, if you like. But moving on to uh, sheet two of A3 uh, is an aerial image. And uh, the approximate outline of the property is shown in a dashed yellow line in the center. I've uh, indicated with uh, wording uh, the surrounding neighborhood, all detached uh, residential. Uh, there is a a religious uh, use facility on the south side of Hawkins Avenue, not adjacent to the property, but not, not far away either. And then um, the commercial corridor on the north side of Route 46 is at the bottom. <clears throat> now, on, moving on to uh, sheet three is a bird's eye view uh, type of picture so that you can see some of the, the, the depth and the proportions of the uh, buildings existing in the neighborhood today relative to the subject property. Again, uh, outlined with the yellow dash line, red balloon, indicating 192 Hawkins Avenue. And I flipped it around on uh, image two of page, on page four, just to show uh, in full the, the perspective uh, to give the board a good look at what the property uh, is today where it sits and what's around it. Uh, moving on to image three on page five of A3, uh, I'm standing on Ball Avenue, the uh, intersection of Ball and Condit Street, uh, looking southerly uh, towards the uh, undeveloped portion 
of the, the flag staff, if you will, if you call this a flag lot, uh, that's a 50 foot wide portion where a new home was proposed. On image, I'm sorry, on page six of A3 is a longer view look uh, trying to capture the entirety of, of the lot, of the entire block front. It didn't do it all, but, but captured the front of the existing home at 192. That's on the right side. Uh, and then the, the um, undeveloped land to the left side that's uh, fronting on ball and condo. Image five on sheet seven at A3 shows uh, a view of the uh, side of the home uh, directly across Condit Street from the proposed lot 1.02. That home fronts on both Ball and Condit Street. And uh, it, the presentation shows uh, fencing and, and nice vegetation. Uh, this particular home, going back to uh, sheet one, no, I'm sorry, going uh, referring to the uh, subdivision plan that Mr. Scott presented, uh, there's a dimension of 25 feet for uh, this, the front yard, the technical front yard for that home uh, between that side of the home and uh, the lot line fronting on Condit Street. I'll come back to that in a moment. Image six on page eight of A3 is a view looking northward from uh, the northern portion of Condit Street, uh, generally capturing the development tone uh, that's uh, across Ball Street, Ball Avenue, excuse me. Uh, image seven shows the uh, dwelling immediately adjacent on lot two in block 716. Uh, in other words, just to the east of the uh, proposed lot 1.02. And finally, uh, another view that uh, is is important, I think, to, to the understanding of this uh, concept is uh, image eight on page 10 of A3, and it shows uh, more clearly the, the proximity of the uh, brick home across Condit Street to the, the front lot line. Again, that's a 25-foot dimension. Uh, our proposal on the other side is for 16-foot uh, dimension oriented to this, the same roadway. When were these pictures taken? Uh, in the last leafy season, uh, last summer. Okay, so 2022, sometime during the summer. Yes, I don't know. I don't recall what month. It was early on after being Did engaged. You take them yourself? Or? Yes, all the ground photos take them myself. Uh, I can't jump that high, so I had to rely on Google for the uh, aerial photos uh, that are part of this uh, exhibit. You like that? Thank you. Um, I'll take all the left I can get. <laughs> okay, so uh, planning proofs are important to board's uh, consideration of this application, everyone's consideration. Why would uh, the uh, deviations that we're proposing be uh, warranting your approval? And for that, I would like to ask for your patience as I uh, go through uh, what might get to be a little tedious, but uh, I'll try to be brief and concise um, for everyone's benefit. We've already had quite a bit of description about uh, the physical nature uh, of the site. Um, but one thing about this particular property uh, that struck me early on is that, uh, the, I said before, the, the site occupies an entire end of the block and it, it spans three uh, frontages actually. And typically with uh, a block end, there is usually a, a structure on each corner. Um, that seems to be the pattern just by visually um, observing as I, I drive through uh, the area and look at it uh, with uh, remote resources, online imagery in particular, uh, that's confirmed. Uh, most block corners have uh, a dwelling on them in the residential zones. And so this particular property lacks such uh, an arrangement. So it's an anomaly. Our proposal, number one, would serve to uh, adjust that by proposing uh, a dwelling on the corner as would be expected uh, and eliminating that uh, anomaly. I also note that the uh, existing dwelling um, 
at 192 Condit Street is set back farther than uh, required uh, from Hawkins, about 51.2 feet. That impressed me as well. Uh, and I'll, I'll come back to, to that um, concept in, in, in just a moment. We know what the uh, sizes are, 62, I'm sorry, 6,250 for proposed lot 1.2, and uh, the parent lot proposed to uh, be 11,250 square feet, all from a 17,500 square foot uh, single lot. We do propose uh, some, in addition to adjusting that anomaly of, of, of missing dwelling on the corner, we're also proposing a more two more regular looking lots. Um, the, today it's, a, it's an irregular shape in the shape of a flag. Uh, the proposed division line would carry forth uh, a continuation of the the, lot, the rear lot line that divides the, the block in, in half going east to west um, and provide for two rectangular shaped lots. In referring to the new lot, uh, proposed lot 1.02 or the new lot, I, I call it that because that's the new change, the visual change that would be most noticeable from this uh, proposal if it were approved. Um, the, the new lot constitutes what I regard as the, the orphaned piece of the subject property. By that I mean it's uh, somewhat of a no man's land by virtue of uh, a disassociation with the principal dwelling at 192 Condit Street. This land is largely unutilized, unmonitored space by my observation and this uh, excess land above the minimum lot area uh, on other type of lots tends to be more integrated and utilized, typically a larger rear yard or a larger front yard. It's rarely uh, positioned at a corner uh, on the entire block front as this property is configured today. I'll say uh, I'm pleased to note that the, the project conforms to the highest tiers of, of land use regulation. That is, we're proposing a conforming use, a single family dwelling. Uh, we're proposing conforming height, as you heard Mr. Chambers testify. And we do have a conforming front setback on Ball Avenue, which I think is the premier street to respect the front setback uh, absolutely because it has such a defined uh, front setback line. Uh, if you spend any time looking down uh, the, the front yards of, of Ball Avenue you, in, in both directions, uh, either direction from Condit Street, you'll know what I mean. Uh, it's a very well-defined um, type of situation and we were able to, to hold that. And that uh, speaks volumes about the, the nature of the fit with that perspective uh, along Ball Avenue makes for very nice integration, uh, in my opinion. Um, the deficiencies, excuse me, the deficiencies of area, width, uh, and front yard on Condit and the building coverage are all intertwined, of course, with the, the smaller lot area of a new building lot. Uh, the existing dwelling lot is only short on lot area, but uh, truly will not appear as such, uh, again, because of the, the disassociation with this uh, extra uh, bit of land that's, that's really not associated with that dwelling at 192 Condit Street. In addition, that deep setback I mentioned from Hawkins also gives the idea of spaciousness uh, at that uh, end of the, the block front. We have uh, defined the, the relief that we're seeking in the application, so I, unless you want me to go over it again, I, I will not. But I will say that uh, for the building coverage differential, uh, it's roughly 125 square feet. Um, if there were 125 square feet less uh, building footprint on the ground, it would be conforming. That's roughly the size of a bedroom by my estimation, 10 by 12 or something of that nature. So uh, that's the magnitude of, of the differential with the, the coverage variance uh, in this uh, particular, on this particular proposed lot. I see elements of a 
a hardship situation as well as a weighing analysis of benefits outweighing detriments in this application. I'm more targeted is the C2 uh, test, which is the benefits versus the detriments weighing analysis. But uh, still, undeniably, there are C1 hardship components related to this lot. It's an irregularly shaped lot, unusually situated excess land area away from the existing dwelling and at the block corner, and more land cannot be obtained to uh, come any closer to the minimum lot area requirements. Uh, but only one of the two tests need to be uh, found met by the board to warrant uh, approval for the four variances. And I submit to you that it clearly meets uh, all the criteria of the C2 test, which is a weighing analysis. So part of the test uh, is to demonstrate that this is a specific piece of property. I think by virtue of the irregularities and the siting of the building and the, the stray land, if you will, I, we, we've clearly made a case that this is a specific piece of property. Um, and there are benefits uh, that I consider public benefits by virtue of the, the application advancing several of the purposes of the municipal land use law, which I'll touch on uh, shortly. The principal evaluation uh, that struck me from the beginning and only got more was solid as I spent time evaluating this application on a detailed level is that uh, this is really a, a, a very classic case uh, pursuant to the Kaufman case, which uh, sp speaks to neighborhood harmony being promoted and created by the deficiency. I spoke to uh, the absence of, of a building on the, the corner piece here. What we're proposing is a modest dwelling that's right-sized, again, my opinion about that, for the land area that's being allocated to it, slightly over the building coverage, but well under the, the maximum lot coverage, I'll point out. So to me, it doesn't jump out as an overreaching, oversized building for its land area. Further uh, validating that finding is that we do have uh, adequate spacing, adequate light and air uh, between the existing dwelling at um, lot two, which is the adjacent property to the east on Ball Avenue uh, by virtue of uh, conforming site setback uh, on the proposed lot 1.02. And it, it's paired with the uh, uh, and it, equal area on the other side, and it was mentioned that it's oriented towards non-living space in the form of a garage today. Um, the function, uh, I'm sorry. So here, here's how I see um, the, the positive side of the weighing analysis, if you will. Um, w this proposal would be filling the block corner with a uh, dwelling, as is, it, as is the norm uh, in this neighborhood. It is reinforcing it, the strong conforming front setback line uh, along Ball Avenue. Provision of a new home that is right size for the neighborhood. Uh, anything but an overreaching uh, project in its scale or massing. To the contrary, it provides an added harmonization of the existing development pattern by filling a quirky void uh, at the corner. It introduces a symmetry with the short setback of the existing corner home across Condit Street, again, that, that brick uh, dwelling that I mentioned and appears uh, uh, in a couple of pages uh, of my exhibit. Uh, shown on page 10, if you want to find it quickly. That symmetry um, is defined as follows. Uh, at the intersection of Condit Street and Ball Avenue, two dwellings fairly uh, closer to the street, I think makes a nice gateway into the Condit Street area, which itself uh, is not as defined as, as Ball Avenue. But interestingly, 
the, the lots just to the south, I'm sorry, the dwellings just to the south of this corner intersection are uh, 40 feet back from uh, Condit Street. So it's like a, a narrow on both sides and then a wide on both sides. To me, that's what I'm talking about, the symmetry and the community form and harmony being introduced in advance by the physical nature of this lot and this proposal. As I mentioned, there's, there's adequate spacing between the proposed home and the adjacent home to the east on Ball, again, in my opinion. Uh, appropriate architectural styling, a very nice design. I, I commend it, Mr. Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I commend Mr. Chambers for uh, the design effort and my clients as well um, to come up with a design that is attractive uh, and a nice blend of styling uh, found on the street. Um, the proposal fills a disruptive uh, void in the neighborhood development pattern. That disruptive void doesn't look too bad today, but if, if it's untended land, there, there's sort of an invitation for things to not maybe look as, as good. Filling it with a home and nice landscaping around the home, uh, to me, uh, sort of forecloses that um, question mark about what's, what's the future of, of this somewhat unattached land uh, on the subject property. Uh, a new home of a known design in the block corner enhances the neighborhood harmony while providing a, a modern, new, and compatible home. And that advances directly purpose A of municipal land use law promotion of the, the general welfare. Uh, we're also proposing to use a creative development technique to promote a desirable visual environment. That is uh, towards advancing purpose I of the municipal land use law. Uh, it eliminates an orphaned piece of land and potential for poor upkeep that might detract from the superb quality of this neighborhood while also taking advantage of existing infrastructure and avoiding sprawl to accommodate the demand to live in a desirable community. And that is uh, advancing purpose M, uh, promote the efficient use of land, purpose M of the municipal land use law. There is somewhat of an argument that um, this modest size home on this lot with the division also limits the, the potential for the excess land uh, associated with one, the dwelling at 192 kind of to lead to that home being made much bigger and, and that would be a conflict with the neighborhood and I noted that the master plan spoke very directly to that being a a particular concern uh, by many people. <coughs> As to the negative criteria, uh, two parts of that is there a substantial detriment to the immediate neighborhood from the uh, relief that is proposed if it were granted, and is there any substantial impairment uh, of the master plan? or zoning ordinance for the municipality. I think <clears throat> that the impact is largely visual, but uh, it is indeed a positive one rather than negative. Yes, there's no home there now, but I think that, that a home, uh, particularly the, the modest home that's proposed and attractive that it is, uh, is a right fit uh, type of visual for uh, this corner for the next era of time this setting is, is indeed appropriate for uh, that finish. As indicated uh, in the tax map, um, there are several other lots in the nearby area that have less than 50 feet in width. Uh, several were on Hawkins were 40 feet in width and less than the 15,000 square foot in area, yet they are individually and collectively neighborhood defining assets. So the proposed smaller lots are, are not a substantial departure uh, for this neighborhood is my principal point there. Uh, again, the higher tiers of planning and zoning are respected. Uh, this is not an intrusive use. This is a, a wanted use, single family detached residential uh, in this neighborhood. Uh, adequate facilities are available to uh, accommodate this new dwelling, parking, utilities, solid waste, 
uh, the green edges that uh, one would expect to see uh, on a home lot. Uh, and this effect would actually be, uh, I'm sorry, and the one setback shortfall is actually a harmonizing factor with the existing situation that I mentioned across Condit Street where there's a 25 foot uh, setback. This is uh, a very small part of the overall zone, so to me, uh, not tantamount to a rezoning. I'm speaking to the impact on the zone plan uh, at this time now. I believe it is consistent with the 2020 master plan intentions to keep incompatible uses out of the R3 neighborhoods, to enhance and protect the character of existing R3 neighborhoods, and avoid disturbance of environmentally sensitive land. In other words, this land is a nice level uh, ready to build site uh, free of environmental constraints and uh, again appropriate for accommodating uh, single family development in my opinion. In addition, the proposed project reinforces the intended development pattern rather than undermines it. And that I think is key uh, for uh, the, the Kaufman analysis. It, it creates the harmony rather than takes it away from it. And, and again, this is a unique and unusual situation, but uh, I think the proposed design uh, fits very well. So uh, in saying that, I, I find there's no basis for a finding that there would be an impairment to the, to the zone plan or zoning ordinance or anything on the magnitude of a substantial impairment. The new home here, um, meaning right on, on this particular property, uh, within walking distance of Route 46 um, is actually supporter of greener growth due to that proximity to the commercial area and the opportunities to, to leave the car at home from time to time. Uh, so all in all, this clearly utilizes uh, an opportunity for an improved planning outcome. I don't find that the requested relief is overreaching. The benefits of the application as a whole, to me, clearly outweigh uh, any detriments, and I find that uh, the, the application does indeed meet the statutory criteria uh, for the requested variances, uh, and I submit to you respectfully, your approval is warranted. I'm ready for your questions. Thank you. Thank you. I'm finished with this witness. Are there members of our board who have questions of this witness on this testimony at this time? Mr. Von Aachen. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I have a few questions. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, sorry, I'm Mr. Pesolano, um, do you know what the age of the uh, home at 192 is currently? I do not, but okay. I think uh, our client can uh, address that if you, you want that number. Okay. Um, during your testimony, you mentioned un untended land and poor upkeep as a concern. Isn't this property currently owned by somebody who has responsibility for maintaining the property? Yes, it will be in the future too. Okay. I, I'm saying this re presents an opportunity, not a, a, a slam dunk that it will happen, but it, it, it's an unusual situation that in my 40 years of studying property, sometimes land that's not really watched or part of a yard that's used gets forgotten. And but it is the responsibility of the existing Absolutely. land owner. Yes. Okay. Um, you also mentioned that this will prevent other uses from occupying this space. Uh, seeing as it's zoned as R3, as you testified, what other uses could be applied to this? It's space? a minor point, but okay. uh, it's still a fact that it, it's it's a conforming use. Not without variances or something else, though. Correct. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, um, Mr. Mealy. Uh, where Mr. Napolitano asked Mr. Chambers earlier whether any trees or how many trees would be taken down by this lot 1.02. I'd like to rephrase that and say, will any be left on 102 before construction? I do not have that answer, sir. Um, but there are I, to be, if you look at the exhibit, your sheet number 10, I believe it is, those are pretty mature trees. They you are. see them go for this purpose. They, they are, and um, while I wasn't here when the rest of the neighborhood was developed, I imagine other uh, sturdy trees did come down to result in, in the residential neighborhood that's there today. So it, it does go with development, for better or worse. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Mr. Matthew had? You, you, you testified that um, there were many lots that were the same size or maybe slightly smaller than the proposed lot in this neighborhood. Correct? I said, I don't think I used the word many, but I uh, did refer to several on, on Hawkins Avenue. Okay. Um, How about on Ball Avenue? Because this lot will end up invariably being on Ball Avenue, correct? One, one lot uh, towards the east end of Ball Avenue is uh, undersized, quite undersized. Um, yeah, I can see that on the on your exhibit that you yeah. gave us. It looks like it's the one closest to Beverwick. It's just behind the house behind on Beverwick. Is that correct? I think so. So it's pretty far from this one site. Yes. I'm um, not at all asserting that because there are smaller lots in the neighborhood, you should approve this. I'm asserting that um, this is not the only situation where there's a narrow lot, yet still the the neighborhood fabric is is a good neighborhood despite those smaller lots being is, in, the, in the mix. There is one other showing that's not on his map, but is on the tax map, uh, uh, lot six and lot block 714. Yeah, I, I, and um, Mr. Napolitano was kind enough to let me overlook his phone. I guess there's no lot, there's no building on that lot. Oh, yeah, okay. There's a lot, but no building. Two of the lots on Hawkins are also one property. Yeah. Or, yeah, one. One building on two, two lots. Yes, and if I read his map correctly, it provides for an 80-foot width, which is seems to be the standard lot in the area, mm -hmm. actually. 80 and 120, yeah. In terms of the proposed house, um, given the orientation, do you think it would be more appropriate to have the driveway and front door and frontage on Ball instead of on Condit? I don't think there's any advantage to that. Um, uh, what are you thinking that that might be achieved by that? I, I'm interested in your perspective. Well, first of all, it looks to me like just looking at the photographs you showed that the house across the street is oriented towards Ball, as are others, in which case there's a fence along Condit, which gives the opportunity to have a 40-foot plus or minus backyard and a 40-foot plus or minus front yard, which is more... I guess more um, in keeping with the rest of the neighborhood as opposed to a 16 foot front yard with a door on it and a driveway. A very, a, I mean, 16 foot front yard, I think you can just barely fit a car on that. Mm -hmm. We did, as Mr. Chambers pointed out, agonize over the orientation and the, the sizing of the dwelling uh, and came to the consensus that, th that this was the the rightest and best fit for uh, the particular setting. If I can use the word rightest, I know it's not a word, <laughs> but that is where where we arrived at uh, the finish for this corner as being best for all considerations. Could you make, uh, yes, it was discussed earlier, could you make a different configuration? Of course, that's possible, but uh, is it desirable uh, in the long run? Now, and the current, the current um, property before subdivision has, am I correct that it has no variances associated with it? That's my understanding. It conforms yeah. to the area, conforms to the minimum width. The setbacks appear to stay within the building envelope that's shown on the, the subdivision plan Mr. Scott prepared. I understand that the building remains, but in, in its current configuration, it has no variances. But after subdivision, even the, the the lot that has the existing house will not conform to the zone, correct? Yes, by virtue of deficient lot area. Okay, thank you. But You're welcome. your testimony that that lot would conform to the neighborhood, even if it doesn't conform to the zone? Yes, we have that existing in the, the visual uh, streetscape, if you will, uh, from the corner of Hawkins and Condit, uh, that's what you will continue seeing, that configuration. So I see no disturbance uh, of the neighborhood uh, fabric that way. Any other members of uh, Mr. Stanziel, do you have a? No. I just, I just want to follow up. Um, on our engineer review letter, we asked for the applicant uh, for testimony um, if the lot, this orphan piece 
of uh, that you called it <laughs> uh, the 6,500 square foot orphan piece. Was, was that was there any? You know if there's any discussions with adjoining lot two on on um, Ball Ave if to have them purchase this piece of property would it would make their lot conforming in size. You know if there's any discussion. I I don't know if that discussion took place. But I, I will say that um, buying or selling uh, offers are part of a of a hardship application for an isolated lot. This is a bit different from that. Yeah. And and to your point, how it's orphaned, it's uh, it's it's part of the lot portion of the lot that you know and the property and it's the applicant is the property owner. It's just interesting that they chose to maintain the portion of the lot on Hawkins and not maintain the portion of the lot on Ball. Just interesting how they, you know, they, they've owned a lot there, um, and they, they chose not to maintain the one portion of it, but maintain the other portion of it, making it look orphaned or unintended, un unintended, like you said. Well, it has a different type of vegetative vibe. I'll, I'll admit that, but it, it's not collecting Grass trash or anything like that. It, it is maintained of sorts, but not not a. a the manicured lawn set. We, we do have ordinances that set certain requirements for how the lawns are supposed to be maintained. That that is key to okay. a good community. And that's good. So you're saying it's maintained differently? Yes. Okay. Any other members of our board, Mr. Teach? Did you have any? Oh, I'm okay. You're okay. I have a question. Ms. Winter, yes. <laughs> um, to your knowledge, has it always been one lot or, I mean, looking at the surrounding properties, it's unique in its shape. So has it always been that way or was it perhaps um, subject to the doctrine of mergers? The, the mystery will rage on. I was quite curious as you are uh, tonight about how this got to be that way. I do not know that answer. I do have, uh, response to the earlier question about the age of the dwelling uh, built in 1965 uh, and there was no uh, discussion about purchase or sale of, of the property. Thank you. Okay. Any other members of the board or our professionals have any questions, further questions? Any members of the public have any questions on this testimony at this time? Hearing and seeing none, Councillor, uh, do you have a question? Please come up and identify yourself and uh, ask. A, this is time for questions now. Good. Chandu Burania, 98 Hawkins Avenue, Persephone, New Jersey. My house is right across from the current house. Um, I'm also a professional engineer and I've testified before this board a ah. few times. So uh, <clears throat> he very eloquently and cleverly called this an improvement. I applaud you for that. But I have a few questions. Have you looked at all of the properties on these two avenues, Ball Avenue and Hawkins Avenue? Honestly, give me that answer, please. I have. You have. You say there are, this is an anomaly because it's a corner without any home. Right? Yes. There are four corners formed by Ball Avenue and Hawkins Avenue. There are two of those corners have more space than this corner. Do you know that? Yes. Okay, then you didn't mention that to the board. The, the lots themselves have uh, corner positions on the lots. Could you be okay, so there are two the corners. Way. Go ahead. I was asking for him to be a little bit clearer to the microphone for the uh, purposes of the recording. How's this? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Do you know that there are two corners on Hawkins Avenue that has more land than the land that's there on the corner of the Condit and Ball? There is a deeper setback, as I mentioned in my testimony, uh, on the subject property that faces Hawkins. Okay. So Hawkins Avenue ends in Summit and, and uh, 46. Both those corners have more property on each corner than this entire lot. I just wanted to say that. Secondly, uh, 
you mentioned that there is an anomaly because there is a corner there, but I think by creating this house, you're creating another anomaly. There's no such corner, what you're proposing. There are eight corners formed by Condit, 46, and Summit. This will be an anomaly because there's no such corner with so many variances on one lot. Third point I want to make. <clears throat> Again, this is time for questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Not the question, I'm sorry. Uh, did you take this photo yourself? All the photos except the aerial images were taken okay. by myself. So at that in my exhibit. Okay. At, at that time, uh, would you please tell me what month of the year that was? Again, it was sometime in the summer when the leafy vegetation was present. Okay. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm asking that question because the, the grass is overgrown and the property across and property across that way is immaculately maintained throughout the year. Anybody can drive there and see it. So those are the questions I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other members of the public have questions on this witness on this testimony at this time? Hearing and seeing none. Counselor? Uh, board, I just want to thank you for your, your time and, and courtesy in listening to me blather on about <laughs> the planning proofs. It's a lot to wade through. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, what you heard tonight from the applicant was a thoughtful design uh, with the intention of eliminating irregularity existing today at the property and complementing the neighborhood. Um, absolutely no need to summarize Mr. Pesolano's planning, planning proofs, but shortly stated this appears to be in my opinion a classic c1 and c2 case and arguably we have met the variance criteria warranting this board to act favorably on the variance relief tonight requested um, with that i would thank you for your time and ask that this board vote to approve the application thank you very much all right we're going to ask for participation by the public at this point in time are there any members of the public who wish to come forward at this time and speak in opposition to this application at this time? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of this application at this time? If you could come forward, state your name and address and be sworn in. Okay. My name is Nogan Carabay, N-I-L-G-U-N, last name Carabay, K-A-R-A-B-A-Y. I live on 79 Hawkins Avenue, Park Stephanie, New Jersey. You can take the microphone out if you want. You don't have to crouch. Yeah, you should probably. Okay, so um, as I said, it's like, it looks like abandoned lot. So my thing is, I, if they build a house, it would look better, like cleaner. And my house would have more value to it. So I'm um, approve, like, approving it. That's all. OK. Uh, any questions of this witness? No? Thank you very much. Yes, any other members of the public who wish? Yes, sir. If you could. Uh, well, I guess there isn't that much room there, so if you could take the microphone, please, and then identify yourself and your uh, residence. Yeah, hi. My name is Rupin Shah. I own the property on 110 Hawkins. I just want to know one thing. Uh, this is R3 zone, correct? Yes. And uh, according to my knowledge, R3 zone is minimum 15,000 square foot. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Because I saw like a couple houses on the street is like a 40 by 100. W why is that? Well, I mean, what is the, you know, R3 zone? So some of those homes may be pre-existing oh. prior to the zoning. Okay, so implemented it's not thing. one house. It's mm -hmm. so many houses I can show you on the street. So that means if I have a lot, 120 by 100, I can subdivide it? You 
would not meet the minimum lot size if you No, I'm just it. saying it's, it, it meets the all setback. If I have 120 by mm -hmm. more, can I subdivide it? I'm just saying, like, you know, all the lot, it doesn't look like 15,000. You would have to do exactly what's happening here. You'd have to come before No, no, no. My, my lot is a lot bigger than this lot. <laughs> if, if, my lot is a lot bigger than this lot. I, I understand that. And there is any, no, any, I mean, this lot has a four variance on each lot. Mm -hmm. I have no variance, no variance. As long as the square footage is not a matter, I can subdivide it. No, right? the square footage is every matter. Well, I, why, why you guys are not? Uh, I, I think he's yeah. just trying to make the point that he's allowed to apply for it. Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You you would be allowed to apply. Okay. Thank you. Please feel free if you could identify yourself and be sworn in. Chandu Burania, 98 Hawkins Avenue, Parsippany, New Jersey. Um, one one uh, thing that came to mind when Gordon asked the question, this house, when it will be built on the corner where it's being built, it will block the view of motorists more so than it is now. And if you all understand the neighborhood, people cut through Ball Avenue. Everybody takes a turn on Ball Avenue when they don't want to go to the 46 traffic light. There's a humongous traffic during the rush hour. And at the same time, when the buses and kids are standing there. And bus stop is right on the corner. So board needs to consider, uh, is this improved from a traffic perspective or not? Uh, in my opinion, it's not. It will actually be a safety hazard. Before you go, where is the bus stop at? What's that? Where is the bus stop? Bus stop is in the corner of Condit and Ball. Co where, they are, where, okay. where this lot is. Where this lot is. Okay. Do you have anything else that you wish to bring to our attention? Yeah, one more thing. So currently, the current house, if you look at the setback of the current house and setback of my house, which is right across, this lot, the entire width of the lot is only five foot or so more than our setback. We're going to build a house in that setback? Think about that. Another thing, there is a, you know, the gentleman already, you know, already getting ready to get a subdivided his lot, right? If you approve this, you're setting, you're setting an example for people like Rukin Shah to come and subdivide the house right behind me. That lot is right behind me. So there is a moral responsibility of this board exactly stop properties like this. There is, a, there is also an answer to why there are some houses that are very small. I did some research. I've been living there since 1991. My daughter was born there. And uh, those houses that are very narrow, they were the first vacation homes for people who lived in New York. There was a condit farm there. And when, the, the, and when it became a street, few people bought the properties and built their vacation homes. So those were the homes when they came on the weekends or something. That's why it was before probably the zoning law was in place. So now we have, today, fast forward, we have all the laws and all the guidance that you guys need. Please use it. Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to speak on this matter? If you come up and identify yourself and your address. My name is uh, Ravi Murupudi, uh, 103 Ball Avenue. Uh, it is right across uh, the new proposal opposite home. I'm sorry, what was your last name? Uh, Murupudi. Spell it. M-U-R-U-P-U-D-I. Thank you. So my objection here is like it is uh, very next to my home. So current, like if I open my uh, window door of my bedroom, it's directly going to that. And uh, the zoning uh, rules, it is very close to my property. Please speak uh, into the microphone. Oh, sorry. So, and I have another objection right now, uh, the maintaining of the lot, basically. So, as it said that it is uh, separated, but the maintenance of the lot is not at all good 
so they are uh, like always the grass is always high it is uh, objecting a lot and then we try to inform to the owner who's staying in that home i try to reach out a couple of times but every time i didn't get a right person to inform me so it's like uh, not well maintained a lot that is true but i didn't see that right responsible person also to taking care of the lot which is causing more mosquitoes and the troubles for my home it is next to my home and there is no leaf cleaning or nothing every time i am the person like all the leaves are coming to my lot and then i have to clean up the whole time mm-hmm. so lot of complaints about the maintenance the current situation i'm not sure how that can be happened when the new home come how that is also going to be maintained thank you is is this is i'm showing him yeah. uh, page the brick seven, home image five yes brick oh, home this is brick home that's yes, yours yes sir all right thank you any other members of the public who wish to speak on this issue at this time counselor do you have uh Oh, we have another individual who would like to speak. Yes, sir, if you could identify yourself and your address. Please speak in the microphone. My name is Alex Peng. Uh, I was naturalized U.S. citizen in 1999. After I got my master's degree in computer science from NJIT in uh, 1991. And this, uh, I live at 114 Ball Avenue and it was built new in 1993 and it was the gift my father gave me because of my graduate and uh, i have been here uh, 30 years this is the first time i actually stand up and the, for the past so many our neighbors they want to expand their house they want to renovate they want to build um swimming pool everything i always think it's a good thing it's always increased the value of their house increase the value of the community but this time i have i have to stand up because i think for all of us here nobody wants to have um a new development only the half size of uh, our existing home i'm, I'm glad that the uh, the last um, um the gentleman actually point out like say he mentioned about like okay hawkins avenue and ball avenue have a whole bunch of the uh, the small one so this one is no exception this one is no um it's not uh, uh anything worse than those one but he has got to understand it is a homework let me just read some okay 52 hawkins avenue built 1937 5,000 square feet, 40 Hawkins, built 1943, 5,200 square feet, 31 Hawkins, built in 1940, and 6,000 square feet, and 24 Avenue, built in 1915, 7,800 square feet. What does that tell us? We kind of like look back 70 years ago or look back like World War II. And we try to say, hey, this is no different from back then. And uh, I believe most of the neighbors here, we kind of shock. We, and also we are curious why such a small properties can build a 25, similar to 25, 45, she a shipping container size of the house on that small properties and i i understand the uh the gentleman said oh, okay this is irregular shape of the properties but uh, um unfortunately we are not birth we, we don't have the bird view actually on the top look at the map see hey it, this is irregular we look at every day we walk there we drive by it's a nice beautiful woods if you look if you guys look at those pictures not from the from the sky we look at just very beautiful nice piece of area woods 
quiet neighbors. And just like the other gentleman said, that corner every morning, rush hours, allow the car from the Beverly Road, make right turn in for Avenue, make left turn on Condit Street. Lots of the kids just stand there, school, waiting for the school bus. You can imagine if we have another house is there, it's not supposed to be there because that's not, not a lot to have a house. Imagine their car, the resident, the car going to park on the street. And you can see from the pictures, Contact Street is not that wide. It's not as wide as the boy. It's pretty much like the two lanes. Imagine some kind of part of the, the car on on uh, a north side. The other side is going to be very dangerous, I, we, we think, because all our kids actually been there like 10, 20 years ago, you know. So, and we do think this is going to uh, lower the, uh, our house value. Just like I pointed out those kind of smaller ones we're talking about. The average, Boy Avenue and Hawkins Avenue, the house value, you guys can look at. It. The average is around like 450000 but those ones I just mentioned, maybe just like 200,000 or lower 300,000. Why? Because those houses get way too old and nobody wants to buy it. If you buy that small land, no way you can expand it. That's the whole, that's our concern. Like I stand here, 2023, 20 years from now, we can look back. We can see the house built new today. How much is that house 20 years from now? I've been here 30 years. I believe and we think the current 192 Contic Street has been rendered out. And uh, I believe if the only actually live in the house feel all the neighbors, feel the community, he might change his mind. Sorry to... No, no, your, yeah. your points are, are we needed so to much. know them. Can, can I ask a question? Yes. Yeah. You said you moved in in 1993, your house was built in 1993. Yes. At the time, was the R3 zoning and 15,000 square feet the requirement back then? Exactly. And okay, thank you. you know what, I, I, you know, this gentleman has very, very good question. That's the reason I bought the house. That's the reason I bought the house. R3, residential district is three, 15,000. My wife said, this is the way to go. And all of a sudden, somebody just slain our face. Now, 6,000 can build another house too. Wait a minute. If I, we knew this one 30 years ago, we have, we have a, a crystal ball, I'm not gonna buy this house. That's the whole point. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you for, for your, your time. Yep. Any other members of the public have anything that they would like to bring to this proceeding? Oh. Hearing and seeing none, Counselor, do you have a... Would you permit me to make a few um, rebuttal comments? To the Absolutely. Thank you. Um, First of all, I just wanted to note for the record that the applicant um, and its team reviewed all of the board issued reports. There was a few um, intra office memos that were distributed also. None of them cited any traffic or safety concern with our proposed um, application. My next comment is the property owner has oh, heard tonight. Miss? Yes. You didn't go over a testimony, but my letter did ask for testimony on the dangerous intersection sign and the accident history and the history of the traffic impacts on the, uh, the on Conduit Street. Just to be clear. Thank you. Um, and you didn't testify. To no one. No. So it's I appreciate the comments from the from the public uh, giving us some, some background on what goes on there. My next comment is the property owner here tonight has heard repeatedly that that yard must be maintained. So at the very least, Please know that when we are leaving this evening, he will be alerting his tenants to maintain that property. 
Um, lastly, the beauty of New Jersey land use, and I'm really just stating this for the benefit of the public, is that each land use application stands on its own. Um, it's very unique. It's a case-by-case -case basis, so this board knows that approval of this application would absolutely not set a precedent um, for other property owners to do to come before this board and do the same thing. However, they are within the right to come before this board and, and request whatever um, uh, relief they may wish. But this approving this application tonight would not set a precedent for other landowners in this area. I, I must admit, I've been doing this for 33 plus years, and I hear that would not set a precedent over and over and over <laughs> again. Right? And it's only partially true. What it does is it doesn't give them permission to assume that it would happen. I understand, and I don't disagree. Fair enough. Are there any members? That we do have one more person. I probably should have been. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Shaw, 109 Ball Avenue. Uh, I move your to name again? Jerry Shaw, SHA. I move in the Ball Avenue, uh, 109 Ball, uh, 1989. And then 192 Hawkins is the worst the, the owner maintained the property. About two months ago, the big tree falling down. In the nighttime, almost, you know, when I drive through, almost hit the big branch. And the right now, tomorrow, anybody can drive through the 192. The big tree is still there. About two, about almost two months, nothing. In the summertime, the grass very high, nobody clean. I don't know. I just want to mention it because uh, nobody maintained the property, and the big tree very dangerous. And then, and the, and the, and the daytime, the school bus could coming by. The big branch just over there. Any, tomorrow, any, anybody welcome to take a look? The tree is still there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. My name is Mustafa Sekmes, 79 Hawkins Avenue. Uh, we're going to need... You need to speak louder and... Closer. My name is Mustafa Sekmes. I'm living in the 79 Hawkins Avenue. And candidate uh, 192 left cross of me. I don't have any complaint. I don't have an exception. Right? But the problem is my neighbors. However, who complain about things? Why they didn't write the call the town? Why they, did, they didn't do nothing about it? My opinion only, each corner has a two houses. And it can be another house and will be cleaner than normal. You know, right now, like a bandit place, like a, he talked about two months, the tree is staying there, it's true. Lawn never getting cut, it's true. Either uh, leaves coming from the uh, tree to down. I'm cleaning my yard, like a uh, hundred feet away to my house. I'm cleaning two, three times because they never clean up. I understand, but I didn't uh, complain about it. Like they didn't do that too. Why they doing now? Because, like uh, I heard, the two, three people like cross the street. They live in there, like a uh, house is like close to there. Sam Longus has it with the all other house window can see the each other. You know, my opinion. If they build it another one, I saw the picture. They doing the good building there, and it will be cleaner. Very nice. We walk in. Everybody's every neighbor walking every day there. With my dog, I'm walking every day. And my only question, I'm getting mad to my neighbors. Why you didn't complain about, until today to do the town? Did you guys complain? You all talked. Oh, Nobody didn't talk. Yeah. Nobody didn't ask. That's why I'm getting mad right now. If they doing it, we'll be clean. Very clean and so the neighbor will be better. What you're basically saying is you're in favor of this application because you believe it will make the neighborhood better. Better if they build because the, it's true. Whatever they say, they're true. It's nasty, dirty. They never cut up. They long more never coming. Like a one, two years, they don't do nothing. Like a wood tree, like a over than ten feet, standing there again. It's now one time. It was standing this time on Condit. Before then, it was on the Hawkins Avenue. But now we can give them the give it to owner the attention. 
to do next time better and build new ones and cleaner. Because all trees, probably not, none of them long over coming there because too many trees in the middle of the places. That's all my attention there. Thank you. Councillor, I've let others come. Is there anything you wish to add to this? No, Mr. Chairman. All right. So if there's no one else that wishes to come up and speak, I would say this closes the evidentiary portion of the uh, application. Um, what is the will of the board? Do we wish to go into conference at this time to discuss this? Do I have a motion to that effect? A motion to go into conference, Mr. Chairman. All right, second. Have, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? All right. Uh, who would like to start the uh, discussion? Is this in private or with the public? This is right here. We're in, in conference. They can overhear us, but it's just us. My personal opinion is that there are too many negatives to this application. I feel very uncomfortable, especially about the size of the property, the square footage which is required, but is going to be less than half of that. I'm, I intend to vote no on this application. Do I have other comments here? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, my biggest concern would be to setting up a precedent of the size of the lot. Um, so if we go ahead, then it will be a something we'll have to live with for a long, long time. So, do I have other comments? Yes. Um, you know, I I know that corner actually, um, and it it does look like, you know, it's it's pretty under kept, and it's it's not very eye appealing. Um, it's not very useful and the way that it sits there. Um, I get, you know, everyone's, you know, complaints and reservations about a house going there. I do agree a house going there would look nice, but, you know, maybe the, that the, you know, the current owner should probably explore potential other options, maybe talking to the other neighbor. It seems that that's an option, but I'm leaning towards putting a house there because it does, it, it looks pretty bad. Mr. Math, do you have some comments? It seems to me the only hardship with this is the irregular lot size, and it, and the the sort of northern portion is not really buildable, so you can't really expand with the setbacks that you have into it very easily. Um, it does, and I guess my main concern is that the new lot is just going to be too small for the zone. In another zone, it would be perfectly acceptable. But and I live on a lot that's small too. I, I mean, I'm, I, you know, but I don't live in this neighborhood, and the, there's a reason why the 15,000 square foot um, minimum lot size was chosen for this zone. And I think um, the, I, I I understand the hardship and the and the problem that's been created, the attractive nuisance that's been created. But I do not believe that granting this number of variances is justified on that basis. Mr. Napolitano? Yes, thank you. Uh, I, I do appreciate all the uh, testimony from the professionals. I, I appreciate the owners trying to improve the land. Uh, you know, this home, if it is built, it's it, it looks to me like it's only got about 500 square feet left of impervious coverage. So, I mean, a small deck and a small pool, and that's not much at all. Uh, I appreciate hearing the neighbor's concerns. Uh, that always plays a big part, I believe, in these cases. Uh, as a board, I'd like to think that each case we do here is individual, and we don't set precedents we've have denied uh, case like this before and we've approved them uh, so therefore you know that's that's not something I'm concerned with uh, but this case here I think has too many variances required and just doesn't seem to fit in this uh, in this neighborhood so I would really know in this we always want to encourage um, property owners to invest in improving their properties and improving our town improving the value of their properties uh, making our communities more attractive. But we can't just allow for uh, spaces to be developed in a non-conforming way time and time again, especially with taking in a, a property which is, has no variances and converting it to two properties, both with variances and the one with four variances. And, and not just close variances, in, in, but some with quite extreme variances uh, to 
to the front yard setback, for example. Um, you know, and one of the testimonies from the residents, which hit me especially hard, is that uh, you know they made an investment in this neighborhood on the basis of having an R3 zone. Um, this property impacts their investment in an, in what some would say is a positive way, uh, but I think the overwhelming opinion is that this is a negative impact to the community. And uh, and so, well, as I brought up is with regard to the uh, maintenance of the property, as several people have complained about, I'd suggest you do bring those complaints to the mayor's action uh, line so he's aware of it and, and potentially inform the police as well as it's an ordinance issue. Um, however, on this particular one, um, I think it's clear I, I, I do not have a favorable um, opinion of this application and we'll be voting no. Okay, well, <clears throat> I greatly appreciate every single comment made by every board member here. I think they're well thought through. I think that every one of you has has paid attention to everything that's been said uh, by the applicant and the objectors. Uh, I agree with the thought that you have what is technically a conforming lot, even if a bit of a hardship, but only a flavor of hardship attached to this lot, but it's conforming. and what we end up with is are two lots that don't conform to the zone. I could be persuaded had we had two lots that are 125 by 80 that because that conforms with the neighborhood. But this has got one lot that would end up becoming conforming to the neighborhood and another lot that is very much out of conformance with the neighborhood and I can't see voting for it. I appreciate the efforts of the applicant. I think what they presented was a pretty good thought on what they could do to improve the property. Um, and I'm sorry to have to turn them down, but it really doesn't fit in the R3 zone. And I, I think that it would not, uh, I, I think the idea that it that it doesn't do any damage to the master plan is a little bit wrong. I don't think it does a great deal of damage to it, but I'm 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 just not convinced that it doesn't hurt our master plan for the area. So I would be voting against. So do I have a motion to come out of conference? So moved, Von Aiken. I have a second. Second. Paul Tom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, Nora, would you call a roll, please? Did each? Yeah. yeah. Neely. No. no. This no. isn't a vote. This is to come out of conference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't hear. I didn't hear. I could just say, all in favor coming out of conference. There you go. That's the yeah. better way. Okay. There we go. Okay. So I hear, all in favor coming out of conference. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nora, would you call? Uh, uh, do I have a motion to deny the application? Mr. Chairman, a motion to deny application number 22.536, Ashutosh Desai and Stephen Buchert, 192 Condit Street, Lot 716, Lot 1, minor subdivision with C variance for a two lot. Subdivision. Do I have a second? Second, Paul Town. All right. Now, Nora, would you call the roll? Did each? Yes to deny. Yeah. Neely? Yes to deny. Math? Yes to deny. Napolitano? Yes to deny. Stanziel? Yes to deny. Von Aiken? Yes. And Dinsmore? Yes. I'm sorry, uh, but the application has been denied. I want to thank all of the public. I want to thank the applicant for making a, a good uh, endeavor to improve this property, but uh, uh, thank all of you for participating. Thank you. All right. Is there anything else that should come before this board at this time? 
No. Tearing and seeing none. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Anybody Second. opposed? All right. We are adjourned. So ordered. Well, that was interesting. <laughs>